Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss the element sulfur and its oxidation number in various compounds. Recall that sulfur is in the same family, the same column, of the periodic table as oxygen. And whereas oxygen has a valence configuration of 2s2, 2p4, giving it six valence electrons, sulfur is 3s2, 3p4, giving it also six valence electrons. When we draw a Lewis structure for sulfur as an element, we put six electrons around the chemical symbol S. Here we show it in yellow uh, because yellow is a commonly used color to represent sulfur because elemental sulfur in many of its allotropes is a yellowish color. This will also be our reference point for the oxidation number because when sulfur is neutral, when it has an oxidation number of zero as an element, it will have six electrons. So all our references will be to exactly how many electrons sulfur has relative to its expected value, its normal value of six electrons. For the compound hydrogen sulfide, each hydrogen atom provides one valence electron and the sulfur atom provides six. Therefore, it is an eight electron system. We can satisfy the octet rule for sulfur by putting all six electrons around sulfur. And this simultaneously satisfies the duet rule since we see that each of the hydrogen atoms has two electrons next to it. In the figure, we show all the electrons as being yellow, the color yellow, because sulfur is more electronegative than hydrogen. So we count the electrons shared between sulfur and hydrogen to the credit of sulfur. Therefore, since sulfur started with six and now it has eight electrons, it's almost as if it has a minus two charge. So we give it an oxidation number of minus two in hydrogen sulfide. In methane thiol, also called methyl mercaptan, each carbon atom provides four valence electrons. Each of the hydrogen atoms provides one valence electron, and sulfur provides a total of six valence electrons. Therefore, we have a 14 electron system. And if we allocate the electrons as shown in the figure, we can satisfy the octet rule for both carbon and sulfur and satisfy the duet rule for each hydrogen atom. Notice that between carbon and hydrogen, we color the electrons as being gray because carbon is more electronegative than hydrogen. So we count the shared electrons as being to the credit of carbon. Similarly, since sulfur is more electronegative than carbon, the two electrons shared between carbon and sulfur are colored yellow because uh, we count them towards sulfur as the more electronegative of the two elements. So since carbon started with four electrons, and now it has six, and we can see them clearly colored in gray. That is effectively a minus two oxidation number for carbon. Similarly, sulfur started off with six electrons, and now it has eight, so it has an oxidation number of minus two. Hydrogen started with one, now has zero, so that gives it the oxidation number of plus one in a thiol. Dimethyl disulfide is a complicated compound because we have lots of electrons. We have six times two sulfur atoms gives us 12 electrons from the sulfurs. We have four times two equals eight electrons from the carbons. And then we have six times one each for the hydrogen atoms for a total of 26 electrons. Where it gets to be somewhat challenging here, it's very similar to the previous case, but now we have a bond between sulfur and sulfur. So the two electrons that are shared between the two sulfur atoms, sulfur is just as electronegative as sulfur is. So we have to uh, split those evenly. And we've kind of shown with a black outline, counting one of the electrons towards the left sulfur and one of the electrons toward the rightmost sulfur. So we see that for the central sulfur atoms that they started with six electrons in a neutral elemental state. And each one now has seven around there. 
So that's effectively a minus one oxidation number for each of the sulfur atoms. The situation for carbon and hydrogen is exactly the same as it was for the previous example we showed for methane file. The next compound we want to look at is a sulfoxide, the most important one, dimethyl sulfoxide, often known by its abbreviations DMSO. So here we have an interesting situation because sulfur is not the most electronegative element here. The most electronegative element is oxygen. Oxygen brings in six electrons. Sulfur brings in six electrons. Each carbon brings in four, and each of the hydrogen brings in one. And the only way that we can satisfy the octet rule for carbon and oxygen is to allocate electrons the way that they're shown on the, on the board uh, with a double bond between sulfur and oxygen. There's also another resonance structure where we could have a sulfur-oxygen single bond, but that's not shown uh, for the sake of brevity. But from the point of view of sulfur, the electrons that it shares with carbon, we count towards sulfur because sulfur is more electronegative than carbon. On the other hand, the electrons shared between sulfur and oxygen count towards oxygen because oxygen is the second most electronegative of all the elements. The only thing more electronegative than oxygen is fluorine. So therefore, we see that sulfur atom has six yellow electrons around it, which is exactly the same number that it has as a neutral element. So we see that the oxidation number of sulfur is equal to zero. And this brings up an important point. Whenever we have an element the oxidation number is zero. But it does not mean that if the oxidation number is zero, that we must only have the element. So here we see the interesting case of sulfur in a compound where it has an oxidation number of zero. The situation for carbon and hydrogen is exactly the same as we've seen from methyl groups previously. And oxygen started with six electrons and it has eight counted towards it. So therefore it has an oxidation number of minus two. Next, we have the thiosulfate ion, which we can think of as starting with sulfate and replacing one of the oxygen atoms with sulfur. Here we have an interesting situation in that the oxidation numbers of the two different sulfur atoms are different. The leftmost sulfur atom we see has only one electron because we the two electrons between sulfur and sulfur, we count one electron to the left sulfur and one towards the right sulfur. So it only has one electron. Since it started with six, that corresponds to an oxidation number of plus five for the leftmost sulfur. On the other hand, the, elect the sulfur atom to the right has seven electrons. And since it started with six, that is corresponds to an oxidation number of minus one. Therefore, the two different atoms in thiosulfate ion have two different oxidation numbers one being minus one and one being plus five. Now suppose that you only knew the formula for the thiosulfate ion, S2, O3, 2 minus, and you didn't know the particular environments of each of the sulfur atoms what would you determine the oxidation number for both of these sulfur atoms to be? Well, if you didn't know the structure, you would only assume that the, each of the sulfur atoms had exactly the same oxidation number. So here's one way to think about that. Two sulfur atoms together should have a total of six electrons each, so there should be 12 electrons. And we notice that taken in aggregate, the sulfur atoms in thiosulfate, as we've drawn here, have eight electrons. So they've gone from 12 to 8. So that corresponds to a loss of four electrons. But it's four electrons spread out over two atoms. So that's a loss of two electrons for each of the sulfur atoms. So therefore, an average oxidation number in thiosulfate of plus two. You could also get the same uh, answer by reasoning that oxygen in general has a minus two oxidation number. And we know that the oxidation number of the ion has to equal the charge. 
And the only way that's possible is if the average oxidation number of sulfur is plus two in thiosulfate. For our next compound, we have dimethyl sulfone where we have two oxygens attached to sulfur rather than simply one. Each of the oxygen atoms brings in six electrons. Sulfur brings in six electrons. So therefore, from those three atoms, we have 18 electrons. The two carbon atoms bring in a total of eight more electrons for each. And then the six hydrogen atoms bring in six electrons. So we have a 32 electron system. One of the uh, resonance structures is shown on the figure. Uh, we could also write numerous other uh, resonance structures where we have sulfur oxygen single bonds for one, the other, or both of the sulfur oxygen bonds. In any of the cases, we would end up with an octet rule satisfied for carbon and oxygen, and sulfur would be satisfied, or we have, as we show here, the expanded octet, which is possible for sulfur because it's in the third row of the periodic table. The only electrons that are shared that we allocate towards sulfur are those in the carbon-sulfur bond because sulfur is more electronegative than carbon. Any electron is shared between sulfur and oxygen, we count towards oxygen because oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur. Since we know that sulfur started out with six electrons as an element, and now it has four electrons, that corresponds to an oxidation number, like a, a theoretical charge, of plus two on sulfur. Next, we look at tetracyanate ion, which has the structure shown. So it bears resemblance to thiosulfate, as we took two thiosulfates and hooked them together with the terminal sulfur atoms. So here again, we have a situation where we have sulfur in two different environments. The sulfurs that are attached to the oxygens uh, have one particular situation. They have only one electron. So therefore, they have a net oxidation number of plus five, whereas the sulfur atoms in the middle, we see that between the two sulfur atoms, we count one electron for one sulfur, one electron for the other sulfur. So each of those has six electrons. So here again, we see a situation where sulfur in a compound has an oxidation number of zero. The central two sulfur atoms have oxidation numbers of zero whereas the other two sulfur atoms have an oxidation number of plus five. If we didn't know the structure of tetracyanate ion, or we just wanted to look at the average oxidation numbers of the sulfur atoms and not the specific oxidation numbers of particular atoms in particular locations, we can make use of the fact that four sulfur atoms together would have a total of 24 electrons. And we see on the uh, figure that is shown that there's a total of 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons. So it went from 24 electrons to 14, which corresponds to a loss of 10 electrons. This loss of 10 electrons spread out over four different sulfur atoms. So here we have the interesting situation that the average oxidation number of sulfur in tetrathionate is plus 2.5. So we see that we can actually have a situation where at least the average oxidation number is a uh, fraction, is a half of an electron, even though that we know that there's no such thing in reality as half of an electron. We could also get the same uh, reasoning if we calculated the oxidation number in the ion S4 O6 2 minus, making use of the fact that oxygen is generally going to be minus 2. The only way we can get a minus 2 charge for that ion is if the average oxidation number for each of the sulfur atoms is 2.5. In sulfur dioxide, we have a total of 18 valence electrons, and the only way to satisfy the octet rule for each of the atoms is to have one of the bonds be a single bond between sulfur and oxygen, 
and the other to be a double bond. And we know this is not the realistic situation. And this tells us when we have this kind of situation that one bond is a single bond and one double bond is double bond, that the actual truth is somewhere in between that we have a resonance hybrid of bonds that are somewhere between a single bond and a double bond. Noticing that we have two electrons remaining on sulfur, this gives us a net oxidation number of sulfur in sulfur dioxide of plus four. Here we have sulfite ion, SO3 2 minus. Each of the oxygens brings in six electrons, as does sulfur, so that gives us 24 electrons. But we have to remember that we need two more electrons to account for the minus two charge. So we're able to uh, satisfy the octet rule for uh, both sulfur and oxygen. And this is just one of the resonance structures showing two single bonds and one double bond between sulfur and oxygen. But we can vary uh, the location and the number of single and double bonds with multiple resonance structures. One of the key features is no matter how we do those structures, we're going to end up with a lone pair on sulfur. So there's two yellow electrons. And this gives us a oxidation number for sulfur in sulfite ion of plus four. Here we have dithionate ion, S2O6, 2 minus. Each of the sulfurs has exactly the same environment. Uh, all the electrons that it shares with oxygen are counted towards oxygen, but there is a pair of electrons for the sulfur-sulfur bond, and each sulfur gets credit for one of those two electrons. Since each sulfur started with six electrons and it ends up with just one, that corresponds to an oxidation number of plus five, for sulfur in dithionate ion. Here is sulfate ion, SO4 2 minus. Each of the sulfur or oxygen atoms brings in a total of six electrons. So that gives us 30 electrons among the five atoms. And then we need to add two more electrons because we have a minus two charge. Therefore, it's a 32 electron system. And we can visualize it spread around uh, the sulfur as four groups of eight electrons. And we've shown it in this particular example, showing two sulfur oxygen single bonds and two sulfur oxygen double bonds but we actually have numerous resonance hybrids with various combinations of single or double bonds oxygen has to have eight electrons and satisfy the octet rule but sulfur has to satisfy the octet rule but it's able to expand the octet and we see in the figure shown that it has a total of 12 electrons which is allowed to do because it's in the third row of the periodic table nevertheless since sulfur started with six electrons and now it has zero because it's bound to oxygens, which is more electronegative than sulfur, sulfur has a oxidation number of plus six in sulfate ion. For our final sulfur compound, we have sulfur trioxide, SO3. Sulfur brings in six electrons, oxygen brings in six electrons. So here we have a 24 electron system. And to uh, satisfy the octet rule for both oxygen and sulfur, we need one sulfur oxygen double bond and two single bonds. How those are arranged can vary, so we'll have three different resonance structures. The important thing to see here is that because sulfur is bound to oxygen, which is more electronegative, 
all the shared electrons are credited towards oxygen. Sulfur started off with six electrons. Now it has zero, so it has a, an oxidation number of plus six in sulfur trioxide. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.